Tennessee's governor just signed a bill that would effectively dismantle local police reforms, including a traffic stop ordinance that was put in place after the death of Tyree Nichols. Nichols, you may remember, is the 29-year-old black man who was beaten by five Memphis police officers during a traffic stop last year. He died three days later from his injuries. Now, despite pleas from Nichols' family, the governor's signature wipes out reforms related to stops for minor traffic violations or things like broken taillights. I want to bring in NBC News senior law enforcement analyst and a former member of President Obama's task force on 21st century policing, Cedric Alexander. It's always good to have you here. I mean, a lot of activists believe these are called pretextual stops. They believe they unfairly target black drivers and they expose them potentially to violence. They say history shows us that. So I wonder what you make of the governor's decision. Well, certainly all the science and data point to exactly what you're talking about there, Chris. But I think it's important to consider this. Uh, on When you think about the work that has been done over the last number of years around reform, uh, Memphis, following the death of Tyree Nichols, along with that community, the leadership and others, uh, came up with a plan with reforms that they thought were very uh, relevant to their community in terms of building relationships, continuing with the police department, and doing away with these unnecessary contextual stops that usually lead oftentimes to some uh, uneventful uh, 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 engagement that result in some national headline. Look, I think one of the worst things that the governor could have done was to repeal those ordinances and those laws that the city, people in that community, people in Memphis still feel are very important to them. I understand the, uh, the governor, of course, when he states that there needs to be more police accountability. I get it, but we need to talk about what is accountability. And part of being accountable is also adhering to listening to and being sensitive to what people in the city of Memphis feel is going to be necessary in order for them to have good public safety and to continue to build relationships. So I think that uh, the governor's decision to repeal those ordinances, I'm not sure if he took into consideration or said and talked with people in that community who live in those communities that need police or anything else, but need good police. Uh, that need to be revisited, and I hope at some point that it is, because at the end of the day, it's about building relationships, and this is going backwards, not going forward. And, and if you hurt those relationships, it is arguable and commonsensical that it makes it more difficult for them to do those jobs if they're not trusted. There is a reason, not just that activists in the citizenry, and there are a lot of activists who work very hard to, to get changes after Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Tyree Nichols, people, family members who worked hard to do that. But there are also people within the policing community who worked for change, who made these negotiations, who trained, did additional training for officers because they don't want to besmirch every police officer who's out there on the job. What's the net effect when those kinds of uh, I, negotiations, working together, community, police officers get overturned, not just the impact on the community side, which is significant, but also within the policing community. Well, certainly police. And in this case, the chief there in Memphis, uh, Chief C.J. Da Davis, along with many other chiefs across the country, have been working for years to build those bridges and those relationships, to look at reform, to look at police and see what it is that we do well and what it is we could do better. And of course, pre-contextual stops are one of those issues that have been in the media, have been a major concern. And if there's ways in which we can take police away from uh, being involved in these type of stops and be more involved in the, in, in the prevention of crime, particularly violent crime in our acute communities across the country, and also taking into account, Chris, that we have shrinking workforces within police. So we got to be able to utilize our personnel a lot smarter than what we have in the past. So being able to have uh, public safety in which the police and the community feel good about each other and are working together and have set goals 
is clearly very important. And those in the police community, thousands of police officers and executives across this country will tell you, it's all about those relationships and building those relationships, looking at reform, understanding how reforms have been important uh, over the last number of years uh, in, in, in keeping our community safe. Because the safety of the community is not solely upon that of the police. It's also the citizens and police that are working together. And there are a lot of police across this country, of course, uh, who want to see things better through these reforms. Cedric Alexander, it's always good to have you on the program. Thank you. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.